conscious couples, business partners, and singles committed to attracting their dream partner, welcome to the Conscious Couples Podcast, where we share our life, love story, and combined relationship expertise to help you create and consistently cultivate the most magnificent, intimate relationship possible. Never again will you feel hopeless and alone in your intimate relationship challenges. Having accumulated thousands of hours coaching conscious couples and individuals all over the world, as well as starting and growing a global business together, Alan and I are here to guide you and all things relationships. Thank you again for tuning into the one place where it's not about you or me, it's about the, the we. Conscious couples and individuals, welcome back to the one and only Conscious Couples Podcast. Today, we have an event recap for you, episode 103. Are you, in quotes, not enough, or, in quotes, too much? And honestly, the last RTE event, I just want to thank everyone. It was so good. Yeah. We had such a good showing. I think this is the first event. I've been doing events for three years now. Mm-hmm with you and with NLU. And I think this is the first event where we had 17 people register and all 17 came. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that everyone, was awesome. everyone who registered actually attended. That was a first. Yeah. And I, I don't know if that'll ever happen again. I hope it does. So, if you know, follow through if you register. No. <laughs> all right. So this is episode 103. We're going to do an event recap. As always, my love. Uh, well, first, I want to give a shout out to Next Level Podcast Solutions, the production team. As a matter of fact, the production team members who are producing this show, working on this show, audio, video, all that actually came. They're a married couple. Shout out to Wilson and Joni. They came to the event. Um, and we're going to share some stuff that uh, we experienced at the event. But before we do, my love, <laughs> what is your intention for today's episode? My intention is quite simple for our listeners. It is going to help each and every single one of them overcome their insecurities. A big it's a, claim. It's a bold I know. Statement. I know. But <laughs> here's the thing. We're going to get you started. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you may not overcome them all today, right now, but we're going to get you started. That's actually almost certain, but like, yeah, let's, let's, let's give it a go. So babe, what we had done was we analyzed our experience and we know that so many people on the conscious couples community journey have so many overlapping fears. And we want to share some of those fears because when you look at overcoming your insecurities, anyone that's listening, anyone that's joining us, like it starts and it's grounded in the fears that we have. And that was actually the step number one that we gave to everyone at the event, which was identify your insecurity. Insecure. Insecurity. And um, let's let's start there. Okay. So in the during the event, we always are engaging with the chat. We also used, and I just want to give this reference, so... This is going to be a spoiler alert. If you've not seen the Hunger Games movies, we kind of built the entire event around Team Peta versus Team Gale mm -hmm. within the Hunger Games trilogy. Also, if you have not seen the Hunger Games movies, they are, in my opinion, honest, uh, just masterpieces. They're wonderful. Uh, human nature, relationships, insecurities, the whole nine. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Despite some of the darker sides of those movies. Okay, so in the event, we asked the step one was to identify the insecurity. And the whole pur purpose of the event is to say, yes, I'm insecure and let's overcome it and not let the insecurity drive. So yeah. here are some of the answers anonymously always that were given. Number one, fear of being left. Number two, I'm not good enough. Number three, like I could do everything or nothing and it still wouldn't be good enough. Mm -hmm. Fear of losing love because of my growth, AKA fear of being too much. Mine is a fear of rejection, not being good enough, fear of showing my full self for fear that they will leave or I will be, quote unquote, too much. Mm -hmm. So what Emilia and I realized, we, we actually took all this data and put it in a word cloud. And what you do in a word cloud, if you've never heard of one, is essentially you take a bunch of words and then it makes a picture out of it. And the words that are the most frequent are the biggest. So it kind of shows you, you call it sentiment data. Yep. Okay. So... I think of this as a pendulum. Number one, every human on earth is insecure. Mm -hmm. Number two, we all fall on a spectrum. And I think the far left of the spectrum, we'll call this zero because I'm a math guy, we'll mm -hmm. call this zero is not enough. People who are on the side of 10 side of the spectrum are too much. Mm -hmm. 
And so some of us are afraid to be too much, too much growth, too intense, too focused, too, and I would say you fall on that. For sure. For sure. I That's mean, my Emilia's... biggest insecurity. And I shared that in the mm-hmm. event. My biggest insecurity is outgrowing people. And because being too I'm, much. Uh, too much for them to yep. handle. Or yep. it would hurt them for me to just be who I am. Exactly. And in the past, I had that same insecurity too. And I'm just going to share this briefly for new listeners. And if it's if you're an older listener, you know this because we shared our love story. But prior to Emilia, I felt like too much for everybody. I had one past partner who said dating you is like dating an effing Stairmaster. Mm -hmm. You never stop. And her friends were actually reaching out to her saying, what's it like being with someone who's happy all the time, Mm -hmm. who's always going, who's always on? And that the truth of the matter is some people can't keep up with that kind of thing. And that's okay. Maybe that's not a compatible thing. So the idea here is let's identify your insecurity and let's identify if there are any mismatches between you and your partner. And if there are, there's a way to drive to five, which is to center up, to get centered. Okay. So the majority of people, statistically speaking, I do think are on the, I don't feel like I'm enough. I'm not enough. I'm not enough. Yep. But because this is the conscious couples podcast and because you and I are the hosts of it and our fear, our, our insecurity is being so growth oriented that our partners won't be able to handle it or won't want us to, will be held back. Mm -hmm. I think we also have attracted a lot of people with a common insecurity. Yeah. And that's why, so of the data in the event, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five people who identified not feeling like they are enough. Mm -hmm. And we had two people identify, I'm not afraid to not be enough. I'm afraid to be way too much. And so that's what the point of this episode is. Figure out which side you're on and then what to do about it. And the what to do about it is going to be more Emilia, but I think the self-awareness of which side you're on is really critical. I think that that's really critical too. And I would absolutely validate how you and I are on the other end, that 10 in the spectrum of, in terms of the insecurity of, insecure about outgrowing or being too much and of that sample set that you just gave the seven there's only two right so that is very statistically um in congruence with what we're talking about because the five out of those seven answers were on the complete opposite end so step number one to overcome your insecurities like we said that might not happen in this one episode but what i do know is that if you're open to this concept you can have progress and that's the biggest thing we talk a lot about beliefs at Evolve Ventures. And we brought that into this conversation, uh, even our last episode, which was huge, why men struggle so much, right? If we don't have a, if, if we don't have a belief that everyone has an insecurity, we're not necessarily going to be able to see those insecurities everywhere. So likewise, if we have a belief with about ourselves that I'm not insecure, right? That's a belief then you're never actually going to be able to understand your insecurity. So if you and I had that, like, I'm not insecure, right? That quite arrogant belief system, we wouldn't be able to acknowledge what the first step is, which is that identification of it. In order to identify, so this would be kind of a ad hoc homework assignment for all of our listeners. I'm going to do this as well. From now on, when I walk in the world, <laughs> when I walk in the world, walk, talk I'm, <laughs> I'm going to look around and look at these two two sides of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. Because I think, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, love, And obviously this is an oversimplification of some of the psychology. Okay. So, but I, I know a lot of men in particular that I'm thinking of from my past that are so afraid to not be enough that they're actually puffer fishing and, and pretending they're super confident when they're not. Oh yeah. And so the people who are, who are insecure about not being enough sometimes end up too much. Mm -hmm. And the people who are too much end up not enough because they're actually shrinking. Yeah. And so you and I in past relationships would shrink ourselves to compensate for our insecurity of being too much. And the people that are feeling not enough often probably puff up (laughs) to be more than they are. And again, I I think there's some exceptions to that rule, but I do find it fascinating that what if, what if the people who are insecure about being too much are shrinking constantly? And what if the people that are insecure about being not enough are puffer fishing constantly? And what if we're triggering each other constantly? Oh, and that's where the concept of the turtle puff comes in, which <laughs> is my favorite Pokemon. It's one of our, it's a Weemon. <laughs> it's a Weemon. Um, so I, I actually want to go with that. So like, I want everyone to envision the regression that happens when you spend time with family. Likely you're going to be too much if you're listening to this podcast with your family. If you hang around your family, you're likely shrinking in some capacity 
or you probably are puffer fishing when you get around them, like one version or the other. That's why relationships are so difficult because what's happening underneath the surface here is what we just scratched on. Everyone's either puffing or shrinking. Yeah. And, and it's really difficult for people to try to stay in the center point of understanding. Number one, accepting the belief that we have insecurities as human beings. I like to say we're perfectly imperfect and accepting our imperfections is a really vulnerable spot. And when you don't do that, you can't actually lead yourself through that self-leadership journey of overcoming that insecurity. Or what a lot of people also do is just make, make grace and space and acceptance for that insecurity. So for example, you and I have made grace, space and acceptance for our insecurity of being too much. We're still, we're still struggling in that, but we've really started to make space to have grace and to accept it. So for example, a lot of people that might fall on the not good enough end, they might be struggling to make that space, grace and acceptance towards that because they might not have people around them that can help them feel okay, not being good enough and help them rise above that. So circling back to why we've, we've very much attracted a lot of people that don't feel good enough is because we have worked through our being too much and staying steady in that, staying in the center yeah, of that. Otherwise we would repel those people. Exactly. I had an interview. I, I was on three different podcasts yesterday that are different shows and they were all men. And my going into these episodes, I was going to try to stay centered, try to stay me. Yeah. And there was a moment on one of them where I got really insecure because this is a fairly new podcaster. Yeah. And I have been podcasting for coming up on seven years now. And I've done 1,600 episodes with Next Level University. I've done 103 with you. So and I've done <laughs> I've done about 300 other shows. So 2,000 plus. Yeah. And this is a fairly new podcaster. And I could tell I was making him so insecure. Yeah. And so I had the tendency of of shrink myself, shrink yeah. myself, shrink myself. And I had this real moment with myself on the interview and I said, wait a minute, he's he's here to interview you. Yeah, he's inspired. You are here to add value. He's inspired. Don't shrink. Just be okay with being better than him at this. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and even call the, this is what helps me. I call the elephant out in the room. I do this all the time. Mm-hmm. People are like, oh, don't do that. You crit hits. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I really don't. I'm going to do it right now. On the interview, I called it out and I said, listen, if, if I'm even doing a good job right now on any level, it's not because I'm, I started out am- amazing at podcasting. Yeah. I've done this 2000 times. Yeah. And so don't, don't, yeah. uh, don't shut off just because maybe some of what I'm saying sounds arrogant or I sound too polished or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and I could tell that he was getting insecure. So I just called the elephant out. I lifted him back up. I stayed at five and we had this really great interview after. Nice. In other words, don't compare yourself to me. You're 50 episodes in. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Really so, beautiful. so for our listeners to bring it back to them, rather than just talking about myself the whole time, <laughs> which one is affecting you? So Mm -hmm. number one is identify. Identify, are you on the zero end or are you on the 10 end? And obviously it's not zero 10. That's the extreme, extreme, extremes. Mm -hmm. Uh, But are you on the more I'm not enough or are you on the more I'm afraid to be too much? That's number one. Number two, what was step two, love? Number two is confronting the root, which you actually just did beautifully and brought that example in. And this is what we had all of our community what, my members. Fear of toxic men? Uh, no, <laughs> okay. confronting the root that's like underneath this insecurity. So there's always a root that's underneath where the insecurity, I like to imagine and visualize, the insecurity is just what you're seeing on the surface. So you ever see that picture where like it's kind of like you're seeing a plant that's growing, but you also see what's underneath the dirt, right? So you see a plant just as a little sprout, but the roots underneath that are big, right? So this little plant is going to grow into something big one day, but it takes time. You know, you ever see the meme of like the watering analogy of why are you just watering dirt? Why are you watering dirt? Well, because one day that seed that I know that's under the the ground is going to grow to be something big. Every insecurity is what you just see on the surface level. What's underneath that is what step number two is it's the root which is a core belief that we all have about ourselves and we went into the three primary ones what are they briefly um worthiness lovability and defectiveness okay Okay. so with that those are the three primary and again over generalization but tends to fall in one of those three okay so for our listeners everyone worthiness defectiveness and unlovability. unlovability yep okay got it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> all right worthiness defectiveness unlovability mm-hmm. each listener try to think of which one of those when i say them p 
pings you most, it, it kind of hurts. It's, ooh, is that true? It stings. Okay, yeah. which one of these stings? You are not worthy. You are not lovable. You are defective. Which one of those stings your heart? That's most likely the one that is the root. Mm-hmm. And the way in which the this this goes to the surface is... I'm afraid of being left. I'm afraid to not be good enough. I'm afraid to be too much. That kind of thing. Exactly. And so uh, that's for another episode. For sure. But I do think that it's important to know at least what those three are and which one is the root. And yeah. we'll, we'll talk later on in later episodes about that. And if you have any questions, reach out, by definitely, the way. Definitely, definitely. So like, for so, example, for uh, every single one of our listeners, and this is what we did at the event, and this is what you actually did with that interviewer, you confronted the root. So he obviously felt defective in comparison to you, and you actually yes. felt super effective. And, and I that felt triggered, unlovable. Yeah, that yeah. triggered your unlovabilities, yeah. both of you guys, right? So you can actually have multiple I think core. he had defective. Yeah. I, I don't think it triggered his unlovable. So you, yeah. you confronted that root by actually having a really safe vulnerability vulnerable space of like listen like I didn't start here you yeah. know and I, I built here and just like for all of our listener or all of our community members at the event what we did was let them know that like you're like you're not alone in these insecurities I, I, I said this I said I know that you might be feeling a little insecure because you're on the microphone but remember you're on the microphone with someone who's done this 2,000 times yeah and after that he actually felt really seen yeah and valued yeah where that could have actually triggered him and then he he could have lashed out and then that would have been yeah obviously a fight on the mics <laughs> uh, i'm joking but but that's really creating that safe space i think it's important to tether to an example yeah where when someone else is insecure it's triggering your insecurity yep. and then your insecurity is triggering their insecurity oh, and yeah. it's this whole insecurity that's why i insecurity think loop relationships are so brutal sometimes because like let's say you go to a party there's so much nonsense happening with these deep insecurities <laughs> that are everybody's just ping-ponging insecurities off each other and i remember i would leave a party and i know a lot of our listeners can relate to this i would i would drive home and i would just feel so like what the hell just happened <laughs> i would feel so like i have to shake off all the mud yeah you know i want to get back to a clear glass like who the hell am i again and all that and so if you've ever that's felt that way that's do. what the social gatherings do it's yeah. just a massive enmeshment yeah. of insecurity bonking <laughs> and so basically be recluses like us no and, and very <laughs> few of us actually understand how to navigate themselves self-leadership through this process of number one identifying your insecurity calling it out having that space space safe space where you confront the root that space space um, that safe space <laughs> where you confront the root and then the, the third component of this is what we mentioned in the event and this kind of brings it full circle with the hunger games if you have seen that trilogy the real or not real method which is essentially what alan and I have referred to in past podcasts as dissipate or validate. That's a method where you notice an insecurity. So would you mind reading another one of those fears? Okay. Dramatic reading time. Like I could do everything or nothing and it still wouldn't be good enough for others. So applying the real or not real method, understanding this, this person, their deepest insecurity is that they'll never be enough for the people that they're referring to, right? The relationships. So is that real or not real? So in this instance, love, it would be, imagine this person sitting down with their intimate partner yeah. and saying, I feel like I never do enough for us. I feel like yeah. I'm never enough for you. Is that real or not real? Yeah. You also used to call this validate, dissipate. Yep. And if the partner is toxic, here's the scary part. They might say, honestly, you aren't enough. Mm-hmm. And then what's that going to do? It's going to get this person to keep staying on that mouse wheel, that yeah. rat race of trying to be good enough, trying to be good enough, trying to be good enough, which is maybe what that toxic partner actually wants yeah. to compensate for the fact that they actually don't feel enough. Right Now, keep assuming this that small. this partner doesn't suck horribly mm. and isn't super toxic, uh, th- what might happen is not real. You're amazing. Thank you so much for all that you do. Yeah. Uh, don't worry. If anything, you've exceeded my expectation, right. whatever. And so Emilia and I try to do the real or not real method often with each other. We've been doing it a lot more lately. Yeah. And we used to call it validate, dissipate, but I think real or not real is e- even better. And yeah. in the Hunger Games movies, if you've not seen them, <laughs> shame on you. 
I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, sometimes I like to make Emilia laugh because <laughs> <laughs> she hates the word shame. It's like never shame anyone for anything. So shame on you if you haven't seen the trilogy. But I'm kidding. <laughs> also, comedy uh. is an overcompensation for insecurity. I need everyone to know that. So I'm feeling very unlovable right now. <clears throat> I'm joking. All right. But here's the thing. So in the films, PETA does real or not real. With Katniss. With Katniss all throughout the film. It's so and it's beautiful. It's so cute. Yeah. Yeah. Real or like you love me. Real or not real. It's like she oh. said she said real and then she grabbed his hand. Oh, and and so I cute. weeped. Oh, it was, so, <laughs> it was sweet. so sweet. It was so sweet. All right. So we do have to jump. <clears throat> Thank you all so much. We really appreciate it. Again, the three steps are number one, identify the insecurity. Number two, confront the root. Confront the root, which is unlovable, worthiness, defective. And then number three is real or not real. Have a conversation with your partner. And if you're single, have a conversation with yourself about this. Is mm-hmm. this real or not real? Am I really not enough? Yeah. Am I really too much or what, am I just being helpful? Right. What and, evidence are you looking at yeah. is what I would say. What evidence are you looking at? Mm-hmm. Powerful. Cool. Just because you make others insecure or just because you're insecure does not make you unworthy, unlovable, or Truth. defective. Truth. And you're not alone. Everyone is on one end or the other. Facts. Everyone's insecure, even if it's about being not secure yeah. or not insecure rather. yeah okay so we gotta jump the if you if you resonated deeply with anything we talked about on this episode relationship talks coaching we do a free half hour with couples or singles and we can identify your route we can dig deep the, the cool part about the podcast is we can take the micro lessons that we learn from individuals all over the world and then bring them into these concepts that are powerful for everyone. But at the end of the day, while the principle applies to you, it is unique to you. Mm -hmm. And so the relationship talks coaching is a way to dig into your unique circumstance, your unique relationship, either with yourself or with your partner. So I hope that you do. We love to meet our listeners. I really, really hope we don't bite. You know, I know sometimes Emilia can be really intimidating and I can be really intimidating. And I just hope that you all know that we have nothing but love. And and honestly, if you are into growth, we are into you. <laughs> that's all, that's what I've got. If you're into growth, we are into you. And if you listen to this show and haven't run away for the hills yet, that means you're into growth. <laughs> so we appreciate you. Please book and uh, we'll talk to you soon. We also invite you to our next event. So you heard an event recap here. It was so phenomenal and our next one is coming up right after valentine's day so it's going to be february 15th at 6 p.m eastern standard time and we're going to go into the topic of how to stay emotionally connected with your partner which is one of the foundational components that underlies a lot of what we see couples struggling with this is because of the emotional well, disconnect. how many partners have you seen that are disconnected they're scrolling. You said this last night. How oh, many yeah. couples are scrolling and not connected, not passing like ships in the night, not a not, team, not a team, not kissing, not cuddles, yeah. not playing footsies under the table like we do. It's whatever. <laughs> uh, but seriously, yeah. you don't want to feel emotionally disconnected from your partner. That's why you have an intimate relationship and it's the best thing in the world. Love is the best thing in the world. So I didn't mean to interrupt you, love, but the link to register is in the show notes and we hope to see you there. Thank you, sweetheart. Well done. Okay. Before we go, as always, thank you, thank you, thank you for listening. We appreciate you. It's not about you or me. It's about the the we. we. We'll talk to you next time. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Conscious Couples Podcast. We love connecting with the Conscious Couples community, so please make sure you follow us on Instagram. I am at Evolve with Amelia, and Alan is Lazarus 88 Also, if you or your partner resonated with this episode, leave us a review at the link in the show notes and please share this with someone you love and care about. Until next time, remember, it's not about you or me. It's about the we. We.